Hello everybody. In today's video lecture we're going to be talking a little bit about macroeconomics, specifically the measurement of gross domestic product. In this activity we'll be talking about the circular flow of the nation's economy and we'll discuss the two different ways a nation's GDP can be measured using either the income approach for measuring GDP or the expenditure approach. We will apply these two methods for measurement to the circular flow that we see here. Let's begin by defining gross domestic product more clearly. One way to measure GDP is by using the income approach. The income approach measures the total income earned by the households in a nation during a year. Let's look at our graph here and decide where the income in the circular flow is shown. Any circular flow model includes two markets. It includes households and firms. Households are the providers of resources to firms who demand resources in order to produce goods and services. As we see in our circular flow here, households provide land, labor, and capital to firms in the resource market. In exchange for the provision of these productive resources, households receive income in the form of wages, interest, and rent. But before we get into the income approach, let's define the other way that GDP can be measured. Another way to measure gross domestic product is by finding the total amount spent on the goods and services produced in a nation by households, firms, the government, and foreigners. This is known as the expenditure approach. Expenditure is another way of saying spending. Therefore, the expenditure approach measures the total amount spent on a nation's goods and services. Let's look at the circular flow model again and find out where the expenditure approach can be seen in this graph. Let's look in the product market now. Households spend money in the product market for which they receive goods and services. Of course households are not the only ones consuming a nation's products. Firms also consume products in the form of capital goods and governments consume products in the product market in the form of infrastructure goods, um, services such as health care, education, and national defense. Let's go into more detail about the income approach now and find out how we can find the total income in a nation, therefore the total GDP, by breaking down the different types of income earned by households. By providing their productive resources to firms in the resource market, households can earn several different types of income. As we know, the different resources that households provide to firms are land, labor, capital, and their entrepreneurship. For each of these types of productive resources, households receive money incomes in return. For land, households receive rental income. Therefore, the payment that households receive for land is called rent. An example of this is a farmer who owns his own land, yet he rents it out to a corporation that farms wheat on his land. The corporation is paying the landowner rental income for the permission to use his land to grow wheat on. Next, let's talk about labor. Labor seems fairly obvious. A worker is somebody who goes to work every day, provides a labor of some sort, whether it's manual labor or intellectual labor. Either way, households provide workers for firms. In exchange for their labor, households earn what we call wages. Wages are the payment households receive in exchange for their labor. Wages could be high wages if a person is providing a particularly valuable type of labor, such as medical services, or they could be low wages if an individual is providing lower skilled labor, such as construction work or menial services. Either way, the wages a household earns are considered the income they earn in exchange for their labor resource. Next, let's talk about capital. Capital is a little bit more difficult to understand. First, we'll, exp we'll identify the income received in exchange for their capital. Households receive interest payments in exchange for their capital resources. To explain this, we need to look at one of the uh, components of our um, circular flow diagram here, and that is the banking sector. So let's look over here at the banking sector and we can uh, determine how households receive payments in exchange for their capital. As you know, many households like to save money. Of course, savings is considered a virtue. When households save money, there is a leakage from the circular flow of income. This is because a penny saved is not a penny spent. Therefore, uh, there is less spending on goods and services when households save. 
However, money saved is not wasted. Money saved in banks is invested by those banks who loan that money back to business firms, which need to borrow money to acquire capital equipment to pay their workers and to cover other costs of production. When a business firm borrows money from a bank to operate its business, it pays the bank interest in return for the privilege of borrowing that money. Of course, whose money are the firms borrowing? Ultimately, the money being borrowed belongs to households who have savings at that bank. In that way, households that save money at banks receive interest payments in return for the bank lending that money to business firms. So savings is considered a leakage from the circular flow, but it is savings that enables firms to invest in capital equipment. Therefore, investment is considered an injection into the circular flow, as we see on the graph here. That's why the green arrow from investment points into the circular flow model, sorry, the yellow arrow, but the green highlighted arrow here is a leakage in the form of savings. Households receive interest payments for money that they save at banks. Banks earn that interest by lending that money to firms. In that way, firms are able to acquire capital using money lent to them through the banking system that ultimately belongs to households. That leaves us with entrepreneurship. Households, some households, are entrepreneurs. These are the business owners. These are the business owners who seek profits by opening a business of their own, starting a business enterprise. If a household starts his or her own business, they are ultimately seeking profits. Therefore, the income earned by households who start their own business is known as profit. If we take the total rents, wages, interest payments, and profits earned by households, we get the total income of the nation, which, when summed together, will give us the GDP, or the gross domestic product of the nation. In this way, the income approach measures the total rent, wages, interest, and profits earned by households to find the total income earned in the resource market in the nation in a year. Next, let's talk about the expenditure approach of measuring GDP. As I explained before, expenditures is another word for spending. In this way, the expenditure approach of measuring GDP sums the total amount spent on goods and services produced in the nation. Spending occurs by households, by the firms, by the government, and by foreigners. Let's talk about each of these at a time, one at a time. When households shop, when households spend money on goods and services, this is considered consumption, or capital C in our simplified equation. Consumption includes all spending by households on goods and services. But with this money income, as we see in our graph here, the money returns to firms in the form of consumption in the product market. So household consumption includes all spending by domestic households on goods and services. The next type of expenditure that occurs in a country is spending by firms on capital goods. This we call investment. Now when we use the word investment here, we're talking about a very particular type of investment. For example, if I said that I'm investing in my education by paying for private school tuition, this is technically not investment from an economic standpoint because what I'm really doing is paying tuition and buying the service of education in the product market. Hence, spending money on private school education is actually a form of consumption. Investment from a macroeconomic standpoint includes all spending by firms on capital goods. So we can just call investment capital spending by firms. Of course, capital goods means the tools, the technology used in the production of goods and services. Whenever a firm buys a new piece of technology or capital, this is considered investment. The next stakeholders who spend money in a nation's economy are the government. We simply call this government spending. What types of things do governments spend money on? This may include education, such as public schools, infrastructure, such as roads and bridges, Government spending may also include spending on health care for the elderly or for the unemployed or for the poor households in the nation. Anytime a government provides public goods to the nation's firms or households, this is considered government spending and it is therefore an injection into the nation's circular flow. But this raises the question, where does government get the money to spend on goods and services for the nation's households and firms? 
Of course, as anybody who has ever filed taxes and earned an income knows, tax money spent by households and firms go to the government sector to allow them to provide the goods and services that firms and households benefit from. Therefore, taxes are considered a leakage from the circular flow, whereas government spending is considered an injection into the circular flow. This leaves one final stakeholder when considering the different types of spending that can go on in a nation, and that is foreigners. Foreigners buy a nation's exports. Let's look again at our model here. We have the foreign sector in the upper left-hand corner. In the foreign sector, money spent by foreigners on our nation's exports are considered an injection into the circular flow. This is because foreigners who earn their own incomes in their own resource market are choosing to spend some of those hard-earned incomes on our nation's goods. This leads to an increase in our nation's GDP since there is money flowing into the economy. But that raises the question, what if somebody in our nation buys a good from abroad? In other words, buys an import. Of course, naturally, any money spent on imports within our nation has to be subtracted from the GDP. This is because import spending is considered a leakage from the circular flow. That's why the arrow points out of the circular flow model. If I buy a t-shirt made in China, then the money I spent on that t-shirt goes to a Chinese household, not to an American household, or in my case, a Swiss household since I live in Switzerland. So here we have the four different types of expenditures that occur in a country. These can be summarized as C plus I plus G plus X, which stands for exports, minus M, which stands for imports. If we add these together, we get the nation's GDP. This is known as the expenditure approach. And the GDP found by finding C plus I plus G plus X minus M gives us the total expenditures in a nation in a year. Now, why does the total income of a nation equal the total expenditures? Because that's really what we're saying here. We're saying that the GDP, regardless of how it is found, will equal the sum of either wages, rent, interest, and profits, or consumption, investment, government spending, and exports minus imports. Here we can see that any money earned by households in the resource market ultimately is spent by households in the product market. Therefore, income earned is money spent. Income equals expenditures. Now, households are not the only ones spending money in a country. So what about money spent by domestic households on foreign goods? If households buy imports from another country, why does this money always come back to the country uh, from which those households are spending? Well, the answer there is that money spent by, let's say, an American household on a t-shirt made in China, of course, I'm spending U.S. dollars on that t-shirt. So money earned by the Chinese firms or sorry, the Chinese firms and households who produce that t-shirt, the only way, the way those U.S. dollars can be spent is if it comes back to the United States in the form of exports for the United States. In this way, a leakage in the form of import spending turns into an injection in the form of export sales. The same goes for investment. If households save money in banks, ultimately that money will be re-injected into the economy through investment. So, thus, the banking sector also has leakages and injections. The same goes for government spending. If, go if households and firms pay taxes to the government, most of the time this tax money will be spent again on uh, public goods for households and firms by the government. So any income earned, some of which is spent on domestic goods, some of which is used to buy imports, some of which is used to pay taxes with, and some of which is saved, ultimately turns into expenditures or spending in the form of government spending, investment by firms, and the purchase of exports by foreigners. In this way, the total income earned in a nation is equal to the total expenditures from all stakeholders on that nation's goods and services. And thus, we have a complete circular flow and two different ways to measure GDP.